startup presentation should, at the very least, talk about the people, how big the market is, how they're going to enter the market, what the business will look like, and why they can make good margins. I had was I put the first money into Skype when it was two and a half guys, that your idea should come from your heart and your experience and your desire and not from you simply want to start a company so you pick an idea off of a whiteboard and do it. Um, August Capital is a uh, venture capital firm. We are based in Menlo Park, California. It was founded in August of 1995. Um, the partners here didn't have a better name, so they called it August, like the month of August. Um, before then, it was another firm called Technology Venture Investors, which was here for 15 years prior. And one of the partners retired and one uh, went upstairs and formed a new firm. And the other two guys, they changed the name from Technology Venture Investors to August. Um, we just raised our sixth August Capital Fund which was just meaning the end of uh, last year, the end of 2012. And that was a $300 million uh, early stage um, uh, IT information technology venture fund and an additional $250 million, which we call our special opportunities fund, where we're looking for kind of unusual later stage, take private buyout type of investments. Um, at August, we focus on very early stage in the company. Typically, 80% of our investments are Series A, which is usually um, a team, a product idea, sometimes a product in the market, sometimes not. Um, what we like to see of companies that we think are like Series A or early stage is very intelligent uh, management founders who have domain expertise in the area that they're working in, meaning if you're a couple of really smart engineers coming out of Oracle, you're not building a consumer web application, and if you're a bunch of consumer guys, you're not building a deep database technology. So intelligence and domain expertise, we like to see um, companies where there appears to be a natural leader in the company. And for me, there's a very in, uh, everybody thinks they're a leader, but there's actually an easy way to tell and that is if there are followers. So if you don't have followers, you don't have a leader. And so it's usually pretty easy to pick that out. And probably the third thing would be um, that it's a big market opportunity. I mean, we see thousands and thousands of companies each year with very interesting, smart, intelligent domain experts that are natural leaders, but the market that they're going out uh, to sell to is, could be a good business but it's just not big enough in the scale that we're looking for. And by big enough in scale, I mean companies that can get to hundreds of millions of dollars in revenue and maybe billions of dollars in revenue. It may have to wait five or 10 or 15 years, but it needs to be big enough so that later it's a freestanding, very large company. For very early companies, typically where we're looking to invest at Series A, the company may just be forming, it may be six months old or maybe 10 months old. Um, probably the biggest mistake that we see would be founders who don't get along well together. And uh, you can never tell if they'll get along well together, but the good sign that they probably will would be that they have worked together before and they've gotten along before. Um, I've heard other investors uh, say for very high volume early stage investors that they have witnessed about 30% of their companies have a founder, at least one founder that kind of blows up and blows out of the company in the process. And typically it's, just some personality or professional or disagreement conflict between the founders. So number one mistake would be founders who jump into a business together who don't have the experience of having worked together. And for a third thing, a common mistake that we see amongst young companies, um, another common one would, would be um, thinking that starting a company is a trial and error process. And, you know, there's a lot of press about the pivot 
where an entrepreneur does one thing and then, oh, the next morning we decided to do something else. And then a week later we pivoted again. Um, some of those things do work out, but I think that's really um, a crapshoot. Uh, you're much better off to have a very good idea of what you're going to do and what you're going to focus on when you start and not think that we'll just find our way along the way because it usually doesn't work. If you want to have a wonderful time, I was a Boy Scout when I was a teenager and we were taught to be prepared and you didn't go hiking in the Sierras in the winter time on a, on a two or three day hike without preparing for everything, thinking about everything that could happen, how far you're going to go, how much food you need, how cold it's going to be, who you're going with, all the tools that you'll need. I think a startup is very similar at the very beginning. You don't just rush out into the wilderness in the mountains and hope that everything works out because you'll probably die. And you're better off to think about what you're going to do and be prepared for what you're going to do. We've backed companies here where it's two founders with a PowerPoint presentation and we've backed teams that had revenue that was growing and were already profitable and we've backed teams everywhere in between. So number one thing being how credible are the founders and do we believe they can do what they're proposing? If that's the case, the only requirement is the team and the story. And there's other cases where we've seen founders where we weren't sure if they were, had the domain expertise um, or the idea was that great and later we look and they're doing a really great job. And so they've proven it with numbers. So we've done investments in both. I think it's very hard to kind of say, if you can check off the next five things, we will fund you because I think for every product and every market, it's different. Startup presentation should at the very least talk about the people, how big the market is, how they're going to enter the market, what the business will look like and why they can make good margins how fast they can grow, how much money it will take, and how they're going to defend themselves. So any company that you look at that gets venture funded up and down uh, Sand Hill Road pretty much all fill into those um, characteristics with the exception of there's some companies um, like a Snapchat or an Instagram, for example, which really didn't have a strong proposal for business model early on but they had a very exciting product, that, or, yeah, or uh, Twitter, for example. But uh, there have been many cases of interesting, high engagement consumer products where you can figure out how to monetize them later or you can sell them along the way or not. Um, but generally, um, myself and most VCs, they like to hear what's the business going to be, not just what's the product going to be. Um, me personally, I probably see uh, via email, talk on the phone, or meet five to ten companies per day, um, five days a week. So if you do the math there, that's a few thousand companies per year, and I probably fund one or two. And the best success I had was I put the first money into Skype when it was two and a half guys and they hadn't built their product yet. They just had an idea for building a peer-to-peer -peer voice network. And that company sold to eBay for $3 billion uh, 36 months later. It worked, but it was the team. You know, My job was to give them some money and help them out a little bit, but the team did a great job. Lesson that I, I had uh, from Skype, I think, is that timing is a very, very important piece of investing. Had Skype been two years earlier, I don't think it would have succeeded because there wasn't sufficient broadband and the laptops didn't have all the microphones and necessary stuff out. And had it been two years later, I think it would have had so much competition from bigger players and Googles and Yahoo's and Microsoft. And Skype was timed very good. And I would say the biggest lesson for me is that timing is maybe the most important thing for a company's success. All right, so I would say um, not one last tip for an entrepreneur is 
that your idea should come from your heart and your experience and your desire and not from you simply want to start a company so you pick an idea off of a whiteboard and do it. You should focus on things that you personally care about, that you're interested in, that you have some experience in, and that will be a lot more fun and a lot higher probability that you build a big successful company.